Good evening. It's great. To, it's, it's wonderful to be in a building when people, when they hear the voices of people chatting and, and getting coming together. It, it is, there's something special about a buzz and a, a, as chatting goes on before a church service. It is it is very special. Um, after all, that's what church is. It's coming together to be together, to chat and and to encourage one another. Um, I was at a, an event about a month ago and they were talking about the different things that churches are meant to be and they, they took that word ecclesia that we translate as church and that they expounded that and, and I got up and spoke afterwards just thanking the speaker uh, and reminded him that the same word ecclesia is used to describe a riot <laughs> in Acts 19 um, so it is it's a church is a gathering of people and that's wonderful to hear that chatting and coming together and coming together from across our, our denominations, across our traditions, um, around what unites us, uh, Jesus Christ. So I want to, to thank you for coming out, uh, for being physically together. Um, it is very special tonight as well, because this is the first time we've been able to do this um, since the, uh, the pandemic. Um, so it is great to be, to be together um, in, in one place, um, and well, as well, those watching at home as well, we're, um, well, a bit of a shout out to you as well. Um, um, just a, what, as you came in, you'll have seen the, the Christmas services up on our, our screens. Um, and to, to mention those to you, um, in St. Patrick's, we are meeting on Christmas Eve at 11.30. Um, on, and then at 10 o'clock on Christmas morning. In first and second, you're meeting together in second, 
at, I'm doing a quick glance, um, at 10.30 as well. Um, and then New Dawn will also be meeting at 10.30 um, as, we, as we celebrate that the gift of Jesus Christ, um, the Saviour come to die. Um, just a second announcement is that there is a retiring offering. Um, as you leave the doors, you'll see a, a plate, um, and uh, there, there is a there, there is an, a chance there uh, to give at that point. Finally, just as a word of, of direction this evening, the service is going to go on relatively unannounced. Um, that means that you're not going to be stuck listening to my voice. Um, breaking up the flows. Uh, Ronnie did ask me on, on, I think was it Wednesday, what are you actually doing for this, Andre? And uh, effectively, this is going to be my role done. Um, but um, it is, um, uh, it is uh, going to continue on relatively on and So if you are a reader, um, keep your eyes on your screen and you should see your reading coming up. Uh, and that's your cue uh, to move to the lectern. I'm going to hand over now to Ronnie, um, who's going to lead us in prayer. Oh, sorry, no, I tell a lie. I'm going to hand you over to the choir, our very capable choir, uh, who uh, are going to lead us in our first, in our first piece, our introit this evening. <coughs> Be thou and so be thee, so me and so. 
Let's bow in prayer. Let's bow our heads before our holy and eternal God. Silent night, holy night. One of the opening words of a car that we're uh, all from, too familiar with. And as we gather into this place today, tonight, gather together as from across the village, for the first time in three years, Father, may our hearts and our minds be silent. May our hearts and minds be still from all the distractions, particularly of the week that lies ahead. Our minds will be racing as to what needs to be done for the big day next Sunday. The presents don't need to be bought or wrapped or cards written and sent. Have we got everything ordered for the meeting? And Father, it's very easy for us to, to drift. But Father, help us tonight. Those voices of distraction will be silenced. And we will hear you. As we are told the old, old story, once again, of that night in Bethlehem when you became flesh and lay in that manger in a stable. Not fit for any human, never mind the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, may our hearts leap for joy. May our hope rise again in the midst of all the trials and the troubles that we have had in recent years. May me, Lord, know the joy of your salvation that was born that night. So, Father, be with us. Give us attentive ears to listen to your word. And give us voices, whether in tune or not a singing voice, but raised to full volume to praise you for the great God, the gracious God, the merciful and loving and incarnate God. We praise you for your amazing gift of salvation. Father, send your spirit to sweep through this building and draw our hearts and mind unto yourself and throned in high. And we ask us in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 3, beginning at the 8th verse. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, The snake, he deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord said to the snake, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between her offspring and yours. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel.
Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous <coughs> as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possessions of the cities of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Today's reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 3 and 6 to 9. A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out from his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fat ring together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put its hands on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
The reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Amen. verses 1 to 7, the birth of Jesus Christ. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration. Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went out to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen.
The reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, the visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod King, when King Herod heard this, he was, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all, all the people, the chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. 
As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On, on coming to the house, they saw the child with, the, with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with, with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they, they returned to their country by another route. Amen.
Please stand as we read the Gospel of John. John chapter 1, the Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were not born, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Good evening. If you don't know who I am, I'm Geoffrey Blue, Minister of Second, and it's lovely to be here with you this evening. Thank you to Andrew for the invitation. I have to begin by making a bit of a confession. I decided that whenever Ronnie was coming to do the reading, that's the point, I would move into the pulpit, and I was very glad that everyone was standing for that last reading, because I just got up into the pulpit and went, there's no seat in this pulpit. <laughs> Clearly I'm too much of a Presbyterian. But I was glad that we were all standing for that. For a few moments this evening, I want us to think about why it is we are gathered here. You see, what happens at this time of year? What's the one question that we all ask each other when it gets to this point in December. I've been doing it all week, and I'm sure you have as well. Whenever you see anybody, what do you say? Are you ready for Christmas? Don't we? That's the question that we're all asking. Are you ready for Christmas? And when it comes to Christmas, there can be a lot of pressure. There can be a lot of expectation. Because as the Christmas song says, Christmas is supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. Hopefully coming up on the PowerPoint, you're gonna see a few pictures which helps us think about that. Because at Christmas, we have this pressure to have the perfect tree, to have great gifts under the tree, to have the house beautifully decorated, to have great food, to have an idyllic time with friends and family. But there's something about it that can leave us feeling very unsatisfied. Why is it that people find January really difficult? Well, I think it's because they find that Christmas has not been what they wanted it to be, what they hoped it to be, or what they expected it to be. You see, we know that life is far from idyllic. If you've had to go to Antrim Hospital at any point, in the past couple of months. You'll have seen firsthand the pressure that our health service is under. You turn on the news screens and what do you see? You see war and you see violence. The ongoing situation in Ukraine, we think about what's happening in Iran and that's only scratching the surface. And then we think about the economic pressures that are increasing upon us all with the cost of living crisis. And that's before we get to what's happening in our own lives. Fears over our health, our own or that of a loved one. Worries for the future. 
pain over broken relationships, unfulfilled longings, grief over the death of a loved one. No matter the appearance we might try to put on, this world is far from idyllic. And all of this is because of sin. The Bible says our world is broken and it says that every single one of us is broken. Just like Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden, we've turned our back on God and we've rejected him. We've lived our lives without him and we think that we don't need him. Well, we're going to face the consequences for our actions. We'll face God's judgment. We'll face an eternity of punishment for our sinful behaviour. So is there any hope? Because no doubt you're sitting here at this point and you're saying, Jeffrey, this is all pretty depressing. Well, there is hope. And that's what Christmas is. You see, there's good news because God promised that he was going to send someone to help. Now, people promise all kinds of things. People make promises all the time. And we wonder if we can depend on them. We wonder if they're true. We think about the promises that politicians make whenever they appear on your doorstep at election time promising you what they're going to do. Do we believe it? We think about the promises that Liz Truss made. Do we remember her? The promises she made whenever she was campaigning to be the next leader of the Conservative Party. Or what about whenever you're in the house and you get that phone call and there's a salesperson on the phone and they're promising you the best deal on this new broadband that's going to be superb and you need to get it. People make promises all the time. Maybe you've made promises about Christmas. You've bought a present and you've told the person you've bought it for, you are going to love this present. And then they open it and they find it's very disappointing. Is the same true for God's promises? We've heard two of his promises this evening. In Genesis 3, 15, God said, I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Into this broken, sinful world, God promised he was going to send a rescuer. And then we heard from Isaiah 9, Isaiah 9, halfway through the Bible, this promise of Genesis 3 comes into sharp focus. Here in Isaiah 9, there's a context of a threat of war. Economic doom is weighing down. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? And in the shadow of gloom, God makes a promise. But to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Isaiah promises that God's Son is going to come into the world and he's going to bring hope. He's going to bring joy in the despair that we find ourselves in. He's going to bring light into the darkness of this world. And the news of that first Christmas, as the angels appeared to the shepherds, was the promised one has come. I don't know how you find waiting for things. Maybe in your house you have been opening an advent calendar each and every day. Julie, my wife, and I have an advent calendar each. She's a chocolate advent calendar. This year I had a crisp advent calendar and I was opening the door this morning. What are we, 18 days in? And for the first time, it was a bag of salt and vinegar this morning. <laughs> We've been counting down, looking ahead to Christmas Day, waiting for Christmas. Maybe you've been waiting for an important event that's coming up. Maybe you're looking forward to a wedding. Maybe you're looking forward to a holiday that you've had to postpone over the past couple of years. And we'll share what have we seen over the past couple of weeks. Well, England are still waiting for the World Cup to come home, aren't they? <laughs> but here at the first Christmas, the waiting is over. And God's promised saviour has arrived. 
Emmanuel, God with us, Matthew says. God's son came into this world born as a baby. The one who spoke this world into being became part of creation itself. Emmanuel, God with us, God in the flesh. Jesus born into this sinful world. Jesus was born into a world surrounded by violence. We know what happens next, that Herod is so disturbed by this news of a new king that he orders all newborn babies and infants to be killed. Right from birth, Jesus is surrounded by broken families, surrounded by grief. And then Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus have to flee to Egypt. Refugees fleeing for their lives. Jesus knows what a broken world is like because he came into it. He lived amongst us, amongst the pain, amongst the sin, and amongst the darkness. The carol once in Royal David City describes it this way, that with the poor and mean and lowly lived on earth our saviour holy. God promised a saviour was going to come. God promised a wonderful counsellor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, and a prince of peace. And we gather here in Brescia, here in December 2022, and we rejoice that God kept his promise. That Emmanuel, God is with us. That God is never overwhelmed. He's never at capacity. He'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. That he is the God who is with us. And he showed that by sending his son into this world. And so no matter what you might be going through, no matter what this Christmas might bring, know that he is Emmanuel, the God who is with us. God promised and Jesus fulfilled that promise. And in Genesis 3, God promised that he would send someone to see him. Matthew 1 verse 21, she'll give birth to a son and you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus fulfilled this promise. You see, even today in our world, so many people want to believe that all they have to do is be good enough, to be respectable enough, to give enough, and they'll get to heaven. So many people say that they'll have done enough. That they may not be perfect, but they are good enough. And they believe that when they die, they'll just get waved into heaven. The truth is that without Christ, we're destined to face the judgment of God. You see, in our arrogance, we've disobeyed God. We've kept God at a distance. We've lived our lives without him and thought that we have no need of him and that we're actually better off without him. When Jesus died, he took upon himself all the wrong things that we have said, thought, and done. He took the blame for it all so nothing can separate us from God. You see, the amazing thing about Christmas is that God fulfilled the promise of a saviour. That despite the way we have treated God, God loved us and he sent his son to be our saviour. In the UK, Christmas Day is going to look very different. Because at three o'clock on Christmas Day, for the first time that most of us can ever remember, there'll be no Queen's speech. It'll be the King's speech. What was very clear in the late queen was her faith. And in one Christmas speech, she famously said this. She said, although we're capable of great acts of kindness, history teaches us that we sometimes need saving from ourselves, from our recklessness or our greed. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive. The baby born in the wooden manger would go to the wooden cross. 
He would experience the anger of God, the judgment of God, so that all who put their faith in Christ will have their sins forgiven and a relationship restored. Jesus is God's promises fulfilled. And so all of this means that for you and me, for everybody watching online, we can know real joy, real hope, real peace. We can truly have something to celebrate this Christmas. Maybe you're sitting here. Maybe you're at home on the sofa and you're watching this and you're saying, well, singing the carols was nice. Hearing the readings, that's a nice thing to do at Christmas. But this man in the pulpit, he's talking rubbish. I don't need Jesus. I have a great Christmas plant. And it's going to be great and I have no need of Jesus. Every Christmas up until now has been great. Why would I need him now? Well, do something for me, will you? On Christmas Day, ask yourself this question. Whenever the day has quietened down, think for a moment. Is there more to life than this? You might have a really difficult Christmas day. Maybe you get to the end of Christmas day and the reality hits you that it didn't live up to expectations. It didn't live up to the adverts. It didn't live up to the picture you had in your head. Well, reflect on it and ask yourself, is there more to life than this? Or maybe you have a great Christmas day. Even if it's the best Christmas day you've ever had, ask yourself, is there more to life than this? Why do people find January so hard? Because they see that the Christmas they hope for doesn't bring the satisfaction they need it. True joy and hope is found only in one place, only in one person, that is Jesus Christ. And so the amazing news, the wonderful news, the joyous news of Christmas is that God's promises were fulfilled. What he said has come true. Christmas is about the promised saviour and rescuer coming. We have a problem, our sin, but Christ has come into the world to save us, to fix the problem we cannot sort ourselves. And he is the wonderful counsellor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. So whenever we know him, we know one who is our counsellor, our Father, who brings peace, mighty God himself, known in our lives. So come to Christ. Know him as your Saviour. Know him, the one who has fulfilled God's promises, then you truly will have the best Christmas ever. And there you go, you can see his PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it up and we'll put a link to it. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we beseech thee, give ear to our prayers, and by thy gracious visitation, lighten the darkness of our hearts. By our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, now in the, the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, 
which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. As I said, church is about gathering. It's gathering around the Word of God, gathering, encouraging one another. Being a church is about being together. And I'm going to invite you to continue church over in the hall, um, where well, there's tea and, and cakes and all manner of, of goodies. Uh, I was only allowed to see some of them. The rest of them are all sort of covered up. Um, but there is a, a team of, of over there currently in the hall waiting uh, to receive you. So please, please, please uh, continue church after church um, as we continue to be together, encouraging one another and, um, uh, and uh, just physically supporting one another. We're going to sing now our, our last hymn, hymn 160, Heart the Herald Angels Sing.